Hi guys, this is Dorothy again with Bead World coming to you with a new tutorial on how to make this cute new bracelet. It's called Dancing Gemstones and to give you some examples, this is actually the one we're going to be making today. It's very summer. It's got the colors of the ocean and we're using cord that looks like the color of sand. And then we have a sand dollar button. But some other ideas that you can also use is this cute pearl one with the gold and the gold shell button with black. And then I have another sample here that has more pearls with the darker brown cord and the um, copper button. So basically you can use any large gemstone. Two millimeter hole is preferred. You can use leather or you can use the nylon cord that we have. Either one works and will be perfect with your bracelet. With the tools you will need, we can. you can either use two flat nose or you can use a needle nose and a flat nose. I actually prefer two flat nose when I'm doing jump rings because we are going to have to align these jump rings and close and make sure they're closed well. But you're gonna need some scissors because we're gonna to need to be cutting the leather. We're gonna need some GS Hypo cement because we're gonna be gluing these Spanish knots that we're going to be making. And then obviously some paper towel so you can do your gluing on the paper towel. And actually before we get started, the directions on how to make this, if you need written directions as well, is on our website at beadworld.com. All of these materials that you see here is also available on our website at beadworld.com. And the other thing is if you're in the Phoenix area or you're in the Scottsdale area, stop by the Bead World store. We will be glad to help you pick out your supplies and what you need to make this adorable, cute little bracelet. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is we need to, if you look at your, I don't know if you all know how to close a jump ring, but I think it's a great lesson and something to learn how to do. If you notice, there is a little split right here in the jump ring. When you use a jump ring, the object of the jump ring is to be able to open it. So that way you can slip it on chain or whatever you want to use it for. What we're gonna do is for these jump rings, we're not actually going to be opening them. We're just going to make sure that they are closed tight so they won't fall off of the leather and they'll look really nice on the bracelet. So what we're gonna do is you put one tool on each side and then as you're bringing the middle back together, you're squeezing close just a little bit. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna feel it scrape or you're going to hear it scrape. And then you will see where the jump ring is perfectly closed. That's what we're looking at where you really cannot even see that at one time there was a split in that jump ring. And what we are gonna do also to make the bracelet look more uniform is we're gonna make sure that all of those splits are on one side of the bracelet. So for right now, what we're going to need for the average seven, six and a half inch wrist, we're gonna need 33 to 36 of these six millimeter jump rings. They're actually a large hole jump ring. I apologize, they're large hole oval jump rings. And we're gonna need 33 to 66. You're gonna need 33 to 66 of your six millimeter large hole beads. We've got three feet of the leather and we've got one button and then our tools. So let's get started and let's get all these jump rings put together to where we will be able then to start making our bracelet. As you see, I'm just grabbing it again on each side and I'm just pushing and I'm pushing it in as I go. You do not want to bypass. If you bypass, you may not be able to correct it and that jump ring then may not be able to be used. So just gently push it in as you're doing that. Give it a little nudge here. Also, the other thing, if you have never done a jump ring, I highly don't recommend that you do this to the jump ring because that's a guaranteed bypass. And in many times, if you bypass it enough, like if you overlap this is what I mean by a bypass, and if you do this, that's exactly what will happen. You may not be able to correct it and you may actually have to cut it off your piece. And that happens too. These are very, very sturdy jump rings. The ones I'm using are the large oval jump rings and they're rhodium plated. And they match my button, I think perfect because the button has a little bit of darkness in it. And I think they look really cute with the button 
and it's going to bring out more of those summer colors in the gemstones. See, I've been doing this for years and even I sometimes get it wrong. Okay, let's just keep going here until we get all of these done. And don't worry about not remembering everything that you need for this bracelet. In the directions online, the very first item is a list of the project supplies that you will need. We have a very large supply of large hole beads at Bead World and on our website, there's some stunning amethyst and we've got some of the new, what they call galaxy eye tiger eye. The real pretty dye tiger eye is absolutely stunning and we have those in several different sizes. But for this project, the six millimeter gemstones seem to work the best with these jump rings. Now you know how to do a jump ring. Also in this bracelet, we're gonna introduce, I don't know if any of you have made this knot, but it's called a Spanish knot. It's a lot like a macrame knot. If you do anything with leather, if you do leather wraps where you sew beads in between two strips of leather, if you start that leather wrap with a Spanish knot, it is so much prettier rather than an overhead knot. An overhead knot has a tendency to put your leather together, whereas the Spanish knot has a tendency to separate your leather a little bit. So you can slide those gemstones right up there and not have a gap. Okay, I have a few left. Hopefully you guys are caught up with me. If you're not, please feel free to pause the video and then you can pick it up once you get all of these jump rings done. On your leather, what you wanna do is put your two ends together. You want to thread one, your button on one end. I like buttons that have the loop on the back. You don't have to have a loop on your button. You can have a button that has holes on the top. And what you'll do is just bring it up through one hole and take it down the other hole. So this one has a loop. So we're gonna put our button on and then we're gonna bring our cord together and that puts the button in the middle of the cord. So you got a foot and a half of cord on each side. To make a Spanish knot, you want to have your first knot, you wanna lay your button flat. So see how I have my leather on the back and then my button's flat in the front? You want your first knot to come right up underneath this button. The reason you don't want it to go right up underneath where your loop or your holes are is it creates some thickness and your button will not lay flat. And on your bracelet, you're gonna want your button once you have it on, to give you an example, you're gonna want your button to lay flat. If it doesn't and you've got that on the end of it, see how it push, pushes your button up. Now the other thing that you can do is you can also, if you sell your jewelry and you want to have a bracelet that is adjustable, you can make an extra loop on the end such as this one and then whoever purchases the bracelet or whoever wears the bracelet can either fasten it in this loop or they can fasten it in this loop so that is an option as well with our button flat what we're going to do is take the cord on the right and you're going to bring it under and then what you're going to do is loop it up and pull your loop kind of tight and you're going to grab it with your fingers at the bottom of that button. Then you're gonna take the cord on the left and you're going to bring it with holding the tail. So slide your fingers all the way down till you get to the very end of the cord. And then you want to bring him around and push him through this hole here. And then you want to pull him up. And as you pull him up, you see that he naturally just turns, but you want to grab the top of that turn at the top of the button. And then what you want to do is holding, very important, you hold your fingers on that leather, pull a little on each of the cords that you have until the leather starts getting smaller and just keep pulling until you get it close enough that you can let go and then you can nudge it up with your fingers. And if you don't get it close enough, that's okay. Just push on him, it'll loosen him up, push on him a little more, and you'll see how the loops open up. And that gives you an opportunity to nudge that leather closer to that button. You'll have fewer gaps if you get that leather as close to the bottom of that button as you can. Okay, then holding the leather, holding the knot we just did, and holding the button, 
you want to take each piece of cord and pull, and that tightens up your knot. And there you are. There's your first Spanish knot. Okay, so I'm going to try to do the next one. We want to start with two Spanish knots. So I'm going to try to do the next one laying it down so you get to see what I'm doing. So I'm taking my right cord. I'm coming over underneath here, underneath my left cord. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to lay him up here. And I'm going to this time grab that knot and that cord. So then I'm gonna take the end of the cord now that's in the middle, so it was my left cord. I'm gonna bring it all the way around and I'm gonna put him through this far left hand hole. And then I'm gonna pull him down. And as you see, again, he's doing that natural flip. Grab him up there as well. And then you just start pulling on each side until your loops get smaller. And you're close enough then that you can take your other hand and you can scooch him up. And tighten them then by pulling on either side. And now we have our two Spanish knots. One of the things I do recommend, and especially when I'm teaching class, I recommend this as well. Don't do this where you pull on the leather with your fingernail. Your fingernails can ruin leather faster than anything else I know. Fingernail and tools should not be used on leather. Always make sure if you could that you use like the, the uh, inside of your finger. Okay, let's get started on getting things loaded. You can start on either side you want. You can start on this side or you can start on this side, either side you want. It really doesn't matter. What we're going to do first, always start on the top side, but you can start on the bottom if you want. Okay, we're gonna load a bead. So now you get to look at your pretty little beads and pick out which one you want and he goes right up to that leather. Then we're gonna take a jump ring and we're going to load the jump ring on both pieces of leather. And there we go. So my split has come up here. Now, this the nice thing about this, you can flip him over, you got the exact same look. He's just on the bottom now versus on the top before. But what we want to do is have the split of the jump ring of all the jump rings that we're loading on the same size side. And that's gonna be the side that's gonna go next to your skin when you put it around your arm. So I'm gonna flip mine back over and I'm gonna put all my splits up here. So then when I put him on my arm, he's gonna look like this. And now we're gonna do every other one. So now we're gonna do the bottom. We're gonna load another bead and scooch him up. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to load another jump ring. This time, we know I know I'm doing my splits on the top. So when we get him up here, I see my splits not on the side I want. So all you need to do is just turn your jump ring around. Time to load another bead on the opposite piece of leather that we just loaded that last bead on. And then we're gonna take another jump ring and we're going to slide him on both pieces of leather. And we're going to do this back and forth and back and forth until we get to the desired length that we would like. The other trick to this is also, as you're doing this, keep it tight. Because if you don't keep it tight, I mean, it's leather, it's gonna be on your arm, it's going to, your skin is going to naturally warm it up and it stretches just a little. So what we want to do is keep it tight to where when it does those, that stretch, it doesn't make it too big and it'll still be a pretty tight fitting bracelet. Okay, so now let's do every other piece of leather. So we're going to do a bead and then the jump ring. And then we're going to just continue to do this until we get all the way to the end or however long we want to make the bracelet. Now, the nice thing about this too is, let's say you make a mistake. I've made my share. When you make a mistake, all you have to do, it's very, very easy, take them off and then put them back on. <laughs> because until we get to the knot at the end, any mistake can be, any mistake can be fixed. So I'm gonna give you guys some time to load this with every, again, a bead on the other, jump ring on both, and then go back with the bead on the other side. Okay. 
You know what? Let's talk about glues while we're doing this. We recommend the GS Hypo Cement. One, it has a very small pen head type applicator. That applicator is perfect for when you are wanting to get into small places and only use a little bit of glue. It's also a very flexible glue. I would never recommend you use super glue. Super glue has a tendency to dry up and flake off. So I'm not paying attention in some of my little guys. So see how I'm scooting him down and I'm flipping him over and then I'm just scooting my jump rings back up because they're not all on the right side. And all you have to do is flip him over. This is matte amazonite that we're using today. I like the matte finish again for the beach look. And I do like to pick and choose so I don't have so much of one color together. Like I've got the darks and the lights and the blues and some more darks and lights and blues. So that way your bracelet has just a variety of color in it and they're not all in the same spot. See how pretty that is guys? With that button there too, absolutely gorgeous. Now, as you're getting toward the end, just give him a little try on to see how far do we need to go. We got a long way to go on this one. And also as you're putting on your jump rings, if you see that maybe you didn't get one lined up exactly right, you also have a great opportunity to fix that. And look at it every now and again, make sure you didn't miss anything. So we've got everything aligned. There's a bead, there's a jump ring, there's a bead, there's a jump ring. When you order online or come into the store to get the jump rings, now we have these jump rings in a variety of colors, but you are gonna need two packs. There's 22 a pack. And you know what? I think before I go any further, I'm gonna just put this around my wrist. So I'm at a good spot because you want your button to go up against, we're gonna actually, I think I need to take off this many. So when we put it on our wrist, what we want to do, and I'm gonna do this backwards, is you want your button to go right in here. So we're gonna do two Spanish knots, which is gonna give it that much additional length where these two Spanish knots are to the bracelet. So I think by the time I do those two Spanish knots and then I do the loop for my button, this is going to be perfect. So I'm gonna stop at this point. I think I'm done with these guys. And what I'm gonna do now is another Spanish knot. And it doesn't matter which side you have your bracelet to do the Spanish knot. It looks the exact same way on both sides of the bracelet, the Spanish knot does. So again, I'm gonna hold, push my beads up Make sure all my jump rings are on the same side. The split of where they open is on the same spot side. Push all my beads up to where I know I've got this good and tight. And then I'm gonna hold my thumb on that last bead to hold it in place and hold it tight. And then we're going underneath with the cord on the right side. And we're going to go around and grab that loop up with my thumb, just like that. Then we're going to take the end of the cord that was on the left that's now in the middle, and we're going to come through that hole over to that space over to the left. And we're going to, as he loops, we're going to grab him at the top. And then all we do is pull a little on each side until we get those loops small enough that we can then grab it with our fingers and we can scooch him up. Now, I didn't get so close, so I need to loosen him up and then scooch him up. I hope you guys can see that and my hands are out of the way. So I'm gonna scooch him up just a little bit more. Now, one thing that some advice to give you guys, don't tighten it up by pulling on either side of the cord until you know your knot is where you want it to be. Because once you tighten him up, he's almost impossible to get out without damaging your leather. So again, making sure my beads are tight, scooching him up. This, this Spanish knot is very important because he is what keeps your beads in place. So now I am going to just pull on either side of the cord and tighten my knot up. Pull him really tight on both sides and that closes him up. 
and we're going to do another one. So we're going to hold our thumb here to hold that knot, bring him under, and loop him over, grab him with your thumb too, take the guy in the middle, the cord in the middle, bring him around, and again, make sure he's going through this side over here. And then he will loop up, get this cord out of the way, grab him with your finger, index finger and your thumb too, and then just pull each of the loops in until you get them close enough that you can tighten them up. It's so hard not to use your fingernails, but your cord will be so much prettier if you don't. Once you get him up there where you want him, again, pull on this side and pull on this side and look how pretty that is, guys. That is absolutely gorgeous and look how gorgeous your bracelet is. Now, let's talk about the button. What you want to do, we're gonna do one more Spanish knot on the end or we can do two more Spanish knots on the end and you can do one or two. I prefer the two. It just, to me, seems to finish it off better and that way you've got three sets of two but you want to be able to do your Spanish knot. You want your button to be able to go through. So you want to do your Spanish knot, I would say about here, because you want your button again to be able to go through easily. So we're gonna do our Spanish knot about here. So I'm gonna hold my thumb there. Again, I'm gonna take the one on the right. I'm gonna bring him behind and I'm going to loop him over and grab that loop at the top. Then I'm gonna take the one that's in the middle now, was on the left, bring him through this side over here and pull him up and as he loops, get this guy out of the way, I'm going to grab him with my thumb and my index finger and then I'm going to bring these up. Feels kind of different this time because you don't have a button or you don't have a bead or another Spanish knot underneath your thumb and your index finger. And then we're going to make our Spanish knot. Before we tighten him, very, very, very important because again, like I said, once you tighten him, he's pretty much done. So before we tighten him, we wanna make sure he looks the way we want him to. And we wanna make sure this button is going to go through. So as you see, my button goes through really easy. So I'm gonna take the button out and then what I'm gonna do is pull on either side and tighten up my knot. And there we go, except I got him a little too tight. If you get him too tight, rub him with your fingers and he will loosen up, okay. So let's do one more Spanish knot, and then we're gonna glue. So I'm holding him, that last Spanish knot, with my thumb and my index finger, and we are going to go behind and loop him up and grab that loop. Then we're gonna take the guy in the middle, see he's in the middle here, <clears throat> and we're gonna take him all the way around and bring him up, pull him down, and then as he gets up there, we're gonna grab him too. And then we're gonna pull both loops up and then we're gonna tighten him up there. And then we're gonna pull him to tighten him up. And there you go. Hard part's over. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue those Spanish knots. So I've got a piece of paper towel. I've ruined so many of these pads by getting glue on them. So now I use a piece of paper towel. Doesn't matter which side he's on that you glue. And by the way, if you don't have any of these beading mats, you should buy some. They are absolutely amazing. As you see, stops your bead from rolling off. So they are absolutely amazing and I would highly recommend you get some. On the GS Hypo Cement, I'm gonna take off the lid and you see glue that's on there. All you have to do is when you take him off, if you have some glue, just rub him off, wipe him off with a paper towel. And you see what a small needle that has in it. You also see that the glue does not stop coming out. And that's okay, just wipe him off. You wanna have a clean needle when you stick him in your leather. 
And then all you're going to do is just stick him in your leather, leave him there for a minute, and he will come out on his own. And then you're just going to tap him with a paper towel to get off any excess glue. And that one is done. What this does is it helps secure your knots and keep them in place even more. While they're secure the way they are, doesn't hurt to have a little extra security. So I just stuck him in and then I'm gonna tap off that excess glue. Okay, then we're gonna go and we're gonna do the other four. So wipe off your glue, stick him in. And don't worry, the glue, don't squeeze the tube. The glue is coming out with him being in there. So whatever you do, don't squeeze the tube because that'll just make more glue come out. Dab off your excess glue. Stick him in here. He's our last one. Dab off your excess glue. Now I know it looks like it's hard to stick this pin head back in here, but it's actually not. What I have learned to do is put my finger behind this. Don't, don't press on it. Just stick your finger there for kind of seeing where you're sticking it and shove him right in. Let's talk about these guys. These are your tails. Now you can do a couple of things. You can cut them off like we did this longer, or you can cut them shorter. It's really up to you. Or what you can do, put on a large hole bead and tie just an overhand knot here and scooch them up to about here. And pull them tight. And then you've got a little bead dangling because we're gonna cut him off about here. So then you have a little bead dangling. So that also is super, super, super cute. Either way you wanna do it, you can do that. But at this point, determine how long you want your end to be. I'm gonna cut my guy off even here. Take him off. And you can also use a smaller bead, large hole bead if you want to, or you could use a metal on the end here if you wanted to. And how cute is that? So this is what you have created. It is absolutely gorgeous. And then all you have to do is just slide your button through there. And there is your finished product. Looks just like summer to me. This reminds me of the ocean. It reminds me of sea glass. Hope you guys have fun making this. It's a bracelet that I think you will enjoy. It's also a bracelet that I think would be an excellent gift for friends and family. Hopefully we will see you soon at our next Bead World session. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your week.